Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, CFL content for the fans, by the fans. Welcome back to CFL Central. I think I'm supposed to say that before, but it is what it is. Whatever. It is our week nine review. And boy, oh boy, there is a lot, a lot of exciting things that happen in this week. With the first half of this week being something I am a fan of. And then the second half of this week being something that I am not much of a fan of. And Rick, Rick is definitely not much of a fan of because his team lost. But let's get into our first game between your Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the visiting... Well, they didn't show up, so I don't know who was visiting. The BC Lions. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, this is... I have been talking this, this entire time about how the Bombers have been a 30-minute team, and if we could just figure out how to play 60, it would make a little bit of a difference. That little bit of a difference was 50 points of just running over BC. Running over BC. So Lions... One thing that is important to mention. So the Lions would get two field goals, two Rouges, and they would get a touchdown. They went for a two-point convert, didn't get it. And the touchdown they got was off of a forced fumble off of Brady Oliveira, which means that the offense produced this many touchdowns for the BC Lions. Zilch. Nothing. Dane Evans was back to Hamilton Tiger Cats Dane Evans, also being – also looking at a man's body and thinking that his hands are 10 feet above him. Um, because that's what I saw. Zach Caleros had a strong, strong game. The, the Kenny Lawler over 200 receiving yards. The bombers had two touchdowns on three throws to start the game with the worst throw of those three being like 39 yards. The worst one of the first three throws of the game, including their second drive, which was a single pass to Dalton Schoen, and that was bloody it. Dalton Schoen was gone. Oh, as, as a Bomber fan, this is the game I was looking for. This is the game I was looking for. I have talked time and time again about this team playing a full game, and the Bombers bloody embarrassed one of the best teams in the league. It just, just ran them over, you know? So this is something where the number one question for me is, can they keep this up? I don't know. We'll have to see. What do you think about this game, Rick? Well, like they always say, do not poke the bear. And the bear mm -hmm. got poked. <laughs> yes, yes. BC was... Um, was poking the bear, and I, I had a lot of title ideas for my bomber vid. I ended up doing I'm Just Ken because I have to capitalize on the Barbie movie and how popular that is because it was it was just <laughs> the marketing was just everywhere. It was, it was tempting to call, to call the video Still Vanilla, but I, <laughs> I decided to go a little bit off that just because do you remember that when the Lions player – called the bombers that that vanilla ass offense. I just I just yes. love the bombers social media team last year after after we beat them cuz um they had a clip of like uh this guy who was like he took a lick out of vanilla ice cream was still vanilla. It's good vanilla. <laughs> it was just like cutting and then it would cut to us getting touchdowns. It was great. Um but yeah, like, speaking like I, of of food like and great food saying, I, Oh, one second. I'll, 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 I just want to quickly get this in there before I forget. Uh, big shout out to uh, Miles, the bartender from Boston Pizza today, uh, who I ran into. Turns out he's a fan of the channel. Thanks, Miles. You did a great job. My he he bro, bro made sure my Caesar was free. Absolute beauty. Absolute beauty. Had to mention. Continue, Rick. Sorry. <laughs> no, what I was gonna just to follow up on that. If yep. anyone does see me or Carter at any games, please do not be afraid to come say hi to us. Yeah, just come in, As... just come up, like slap me in the face and tell me you're a viewer. <laughs> and then I'll be like, okay, I know I deserved it. This is this is the ghost of Tommy Cundell. Uh, and we we will get to that. 
Although, although realistically, I'm not going to be the one eating the, those slaps. It's going to be you, Rick. Um. <laughs> but anyways, like I was saying in the preview, if we got the Hamilton Evans, this is what would happen. And this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which makes week 18, October 6th, on a Friday, that much better. Because you guys are on the road in BC for the season deciding game. You guys lost 30 to 6. They lost 50 to 14. Now this is going to be the deciding nail biter on October 6th. Yeah, I guess so. The, uh, the interesting thing I will say uh, about this is that, like, man, this... This is just one of those games where if you're the Lions, it's like you you had that really big, strong performance in that first one and that it just it, it just fell apart. And the, the thing was, is that did I, the Lions defense was going to win or lose this game. And I, I that's why I do not blame their defensive coordinator at all. He's actually really, really good. It just he just didn't get it. And I got to say, I was interested to see. So first off, I went on the CFL Instagram and the amount of comments asking for the, the, the crowd noise rule to be in effect. The one where uh, if the uh, crowd is too loud, you could be given uh, some sort of penalty for it. I, I'm not sure if the NFL or some other league has had that. Really? Yes. I saw this on Instagram and I was like, then what the fuck is home field advantage? Well, home field advantage shouldn't be a thing. It's like, yes, it should. Yes, it should. And also, you're asking football fans to be quiet. The, the the most drunk of drunk sports fans to be quiet. Good <laughs> fucking luck. Good fucking luck. Like, the thing about football that makes it so fun is that you can be loud. You can be rowdy. You can be obnoxious. You can be everything at all at once. And, and that is what makes football football. <laughs> As crazy as it is, is this barbarian-style <laughs> warrior sport in the 21st century of pure aggression. That is football. That is what it is. So taking the crowd noise aspect out of it, boo, it sucks. It's not our I, fault that our crowd is louder than yours. I'm sorry. I just had to say it. I will say if they're going to get rid of crowd noise, they have to get rid of those Montreal horns first. Oh my God. That like that, but that you could re reasonably get rid of that now because you could argue that that's not fans making the noise and that's them pushing a button on, Just a, saying. on a horn. Yes. Cause it's one thing. If you have the blow horns, it's another thing. If you have the ones that you just push on, because then it's not really you making the sound. That's not really crowd noise. That's just crowd annoyance. But the good thing that I will say that I liked is mm -hmm. two things. You guys spread the ball around to get all of your touchdowns, oh, except oh, for Oliveira's oh, yes. Oh, yes. two touchdowns and Schoen's two touchdowns. But other than that, you guys spread the ball around. Wallatarski um, was making some real good catches. I was very, very happy with other, Paul, like country music star Wallatarski. Uh, he will sometimes play around the city doing gigs, just playing country music. Turns out he's a big country music guy. Sorry, just just had to shout out the legendary music star that is Drew Walatarski. And the other thing that kind of shocked me was the fact that BC yep. had one sack the whole game. Yep. And it was bets, and wasn't it? One game that you guys actually it had was bets, wasn't it? Rush blocking and pass blocking synced. Oh my god, I that's another thing I want to talk about. Oh, the the pass blocking has always been pretty solid. The rush blocking this game. Our guards figured out how to do it. Our guards figured out how to do it. Jeff Gray had a great game. Pat Newfeld had a great game. Chris Kolinkowski, our center, had himself a great game. That is what we needed. And it made a huge difference on those interior runs with Brady Oliveira. And the last thing I want to bring up um, is the fact that um, losing my train of thought. Rick, say something before I can remember, please. Um, <laughs> Completely forgot where I was going with that. 
that Ev- Evans only had 113 passing yards. Yes. And two interceptions. And that reminds me. That reminds me of what I was trying to think of. <laughs> there were some people that I saw that were claiming that this game would be very, very different if Vernon Adams Jr. were then. And, and this is my answer. No. No. Here's why. Does BC get more than 14 points? Yes. However, your defense gave up 50 points. If Vernon Adams Jr. plays, your defense still gives up 50 points. Do you give up 50 points and win a football game? The answer, survey says, fucking nope. Fucking no. <laughs> Anyways, so I was very pleased. We, 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 got, we got other games, though, to get on to. And the other game, the Toronto Argonauts have lost by the hands of Jake Mayer and the Calgary Stampeders with a resounding 20 to seven victory over the Argonauts. And it sounds like, and Chad Kelly goes out halfway through this game. Turns out he's going to be ready for next game. But uh, yeah, so turns out it was the Stampeders, the Stampeders who were going to get the first win against the Argonauts. Not going to lie, not who I expected. However, Jake Mayer has had a pretty strong performance this past few weeks. So how how did you feel about this game? Because I did get to watch a bit of this game. I was in Kenora, Ontario watching this. Uh, but overall, uh, I was glad to see the Stamps win. Um, So I'll try my best not to piss off Argo fans when I make these comments. Oh, uh, the, you, you, you're good at pissing people off. Don't worry, Rick. Thanks, but, and I told them, I'm sorry for bringing out my voodoo crap, because people are going to blame me for bringing out my voodoo Uh crap Uh with this, but I, with Chad Kelly going four for six, 94 yards and one touchdown, getting hurt, I'm glad that their team finally came back to planet Earth, because as they can, as their fans can see, Without Chad Kelly, their team is going nowhere. No, that's, that's Cameron Duke. Yeah, yeah, he went eight for fifteen for sixty-three yards and an interception, but he went nowhere. AJ Watt was doing well. Some I didn't see where he got injured, but he got injured somewhere. He was on the sideline for second quarter. Yep. He did seven carries for 32 yards. They had no running game. Well, and that's and that's the thing. Sometimes when you have a big player on your team who's out or injured or whatever it is, it can it'll it'll do one of two things. Either it'll motivate the team to play some of the best sport and I'm because I I'm this is not even just generally a football thing. Some of the best play in in sports or they'll just completely shut down. A great example of this I- is is the Winnipeg Jets versus the Montreal Canadiens in the playoffs during the pandemic year, where this happened for both teams. Mark Shifley just absolutely runs over Jake Evans. Clean hit, hard as shit. Shifley gets suspended. Evans is injured. So you have both players being out for their team, and then you see two different responses. The Montreal uh, Canadiens decide to play some of the best hockey you have ever seen in your entire life because they're so mad that this guy got injured. The Jets lose one of their best players and the team completely shuts down. And what we have seen of this Toronto Argonauts is that they are the Winnipeg Jets in this situation and they are not the Montreal Canadiens in this situation. When Chad Kelly, one of the most vital parts of that team goes out, the rest of the team kind of shuts down. Even when the even when you have guys like AJ Lett who's still playing, they're not playing. It, it, it's just not there the same way it was before. And I would, to be honest, I would be, I would kind of would not be surprised if the Bombers would be like that in a similar situation in the sense of if Caleros go down, goes down, the, a scared. lot of pieces on the Bombers would, would shut down. Even even if even if we have Prukop and what's his name and Drew Brown putting Brown. up decent performances, the the other aspects of the team who have nothing to do with the quarterbacks would not perform to the same extent. Oh, I can tell you right now, if you guys lost Caleros, you guys 
Krukop and Brown are not throwing like three, four hundred nope. yard games. Mm-mm. Nope. And not, not only that, but on the defense, they lost Pickett, Adrian Pickett, and Brinkman as well. Yep, that's true. And then the Stampeders running game just went from like down here to all the way up here. No, definitely. No, they 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 had they had a really strong game there against the Argonauts. And so it was and then this was another one where Paredes uh finally got back to form where he he had gotten a 45 and a 42 yard uh field goal uh for Rene Paredes. So uh, another strong performance by him which is is always going to help. And the thing that that Calgary really did a, a good job of in this game was getting a lead early kind of beating up uh, the Argonauts in the first half, getting uh, and getting ahead, and then at that point just playing shutdown defense and just killing the clock for the entire second half of this game. Because that, that is essentially what they did. They, they After the first half, they were up 17-7. to They got a field goal in the third corner, and then that was it for the rest of the game. Toronto didn't get a single point in the second half of this football game. You cannot go 30 minutes and get nothing. You can't. I mean, I mean, it's more of 45 minutes because they didn't get any points after the... First God, quarter. they didn't get any in the second quarter either. Oh, Jesus Christ. And, here, and here's the thing with Calgary is Jake Mirror went 22 for 24. Yep. And 149, but had no touchdowns. So, like, that's... I'm sorry, you can go 22 for 22. If you're not getting touchdowns, like... If it wasn't for um, that, um, what was it? Was it the leak? The kickoff for the the touch the touchdown. I'm not where sure. he went to go. Yeah, I I missed part of it, but yeah, it was. Um, because I know the um. Oh yes, that's what it was. The Boy. um Grace went to go punt it. Leak returned it for six yards and then he fumbled it in the end zone. And oh Calgary's yeah, defense went and landed that on play, it for the yes. touchdown. Yeah, no, because he he had went to make the catch. He missed the catch, but he still touched the ball, which meant that the no yards rule was now null. And Calgary yeah. could go for it and they recovered it in the end zone and got a touchdown there. Uh, but that, but that's the thing. You you can't make that kind of mistake. Otherwise, that's going to happen. So, overall, the Stamps would win this by a score of twenty to seven. And now we're going to get to our third game of the week, which is where all the happiness goes away. Isn't that right, Rick? A twenty-seven to fourteen victory for the Montreal Alouettes over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So, Rick, what went wrong? I don't even know where to begin in this game because first quarter, okay, 0-0 after first quarter, I'll take that. They scored a field goal in the second quarter. We scored, what was it? Uh, We scored a, yep, Butler got a touchdown. We got a single. No, we got a, no, we got a single and and a touchdown and a field goal. Then, so it's 11-3. We get a field goal, third quarter. Everything's going well. Then that's where it all went to shit. Because we're getting all these first downs, first half. How many first downs did we get the whole second half? One first down in the whole second half. And then out of nowhere, Montreal has something up their butthole. And they get 18 points in the fourth quarter. They come out with some flea flicker nonsense. I saw that. And I thought, I thought I'm like, okay, these guys don't have Grant in their lineup. Like we're, we're going to run out. We're going to run with this game. But this goes on to show why you need to have more playbooks and more plays in your playbook and stop running the same freaking flea flicker six re- really good you guys i'm still waiting for a team to try doing the philly special do you know what i'm talking about 
no. The infamous play, the Philadelphia Eagles, where they um, the uh, play uh, so he gets snapped to the quarterback. The quarterback immediately throws it to his wide receiver. Their quarterback then runs into the end zone wide. The receiver then runs back to like runs behind the pocket. And then he throws it and the quarterback catches it in the end zone for the touchdown. Now, you know the play I'm talking about? I, the only way it's that from that the Super Bowl happen. a few years ago. You should pl- you please go and watch it. Phil- the Philly special. The only way that that can happen for us is a if Loxley starts with the ball, passes it to Powell, Loxley goes down to the end zone and Powell throws it to Loxley or Powell starts and Loxley throws it to Powell. That's yeah. the only way that would work with our team. That's but, fair. Although I will, I, although I will say when it comes to playbook changes, uh, you might be seeing some of those soon in a video that was coming out that, uh, well, Rick's going to be very, very happy in this video. So you guys will need to make sure uh, you guys check that out as um, Hamilton Tiger uh, Tiger Cats offensive coordinator Tommy Condell has been canned, and we're yeah yeah been there fired. it is. We we're gonna have a video about it, and and Rick is gonna lose his mind about it. So make sure you guys check that out um, when that guy's so when that comes. The out. good thing that I liked about this game is James Butler nine carries for fifty one yards and a touchdown. Eight for ten carry or eight for ten receiving for sixty one yards goes to show that he can be a dual threat. Yep. Our problem with that is outside of Godwin and Butler, no one else can ca- could catch squat. I see. And our defense was on the field for way too long. Hmm. Yeah. No. It, it, it's one of those things where you guys. It was one of those things where I, I I found after the second quarter, it was kind of a slow shutting down of the team where, I mean, you put up three, gave up six in that third quarter, and then that fourth quarter was just a complete, utter collapse of everything. Your side of Bomber fans is now going to come out in me. Legio has missed his first field goal in a tie cat uniform. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes? Mine. Has he now? He's Has only he missed now? one. One field goal. Oh, it Mine. always it starts with one. It starts with one. I'm not going to count of how many single points he has missed. <laughs> but he's only missed one. So he is something like, what, 16 for 17, something like that since joining us? Not too bad. But I will leave it at that. It's the kicks and clutch that he misses. That's the problem. The, the other thing clutch. is, Fajardo, 318 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. I mean. So not the ideal touchdown yeah. interception ratio. So one of those things where no. he was do- doing well at getting the ball downfield, but it shows that he wasn't really mm. the one that was necessarily – really doing that final push to get them into the end zone. But I mean, well, oh. William stack has finally stepped back and has returned. Yep. It's not that good old CFL. William stay please step back <laughs> as they used last year. Such a stupid pun. He mm. had 106 yards for 19 carries with Very zero good. touchdowns. And uh. then obviously Fajardo's man crush. You know where I'm going with this. I didn't receive this. Austin Mack. Oh, Mack. Five for, yes. Five for five. 106 yards. For Jardo's man crush. Definitely. So overall. If you don't, have, if you don't cover him, you have. You, you, you got to get some good coverage on Austin Mack. And I mean, that that would be it as the Alouettes would get a 27 to 14 victory over the Thai Cats. And we get on to our last game this week, which is the Ottawa Red Blacks versus the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And it is sad to see, it is sad to see that there was no crumb back. <clears throat> I mean, it works well for you, it's standings-wise, but 
I I I I don't give a shit. It's, I want Saskatchewan not, to lose every game not, of their life. It's not even that. It's they had no touchdowns offensively. Like the only like Morrow had a rushing touchdown, Fine had a touchdown for Saskatchewan. Yeah. Other than that, this is the one thing that is driving me nuts. They got this a fifty-one year. yard field goal. I will say. Here, here's the thing that and then Lawther was fifty-four. It is, you seen that screenshot that I sent you before this video? If you take out Caleros, off the top, this league's yes passing touchdowns are down the toilet. The yeah, team. no, it like because you have Caleros it's, at sixteen, and then it drops down to nine, which is like ha- almost. It's not half. even that. It's it seems like the kickers have gone up. The quarterbacks passing touchdowns have gone down. Yeah. Like, it seems like this is, what, the second game in, like, three weeks where it's just, like, a kicking game. And those games are just boring. No, definitely. Yeah, the, the, this like, is one where where if you're the Red Black, you're, you're trying desperately to get back to 500 um, now that... Uh, I mean, <sighs> Red Blacks had no... No rushing. Their top rusher had 33 yards for 12 carries. Yep. The next one had 31 yards for five carries. And your receiving core, when you have Jalen Acklin with 56 yards. Yep. And your next one has 38. There's something mistakenly wrong. Yeah, no. So, it, it's one of those things where they're, they, when the Red Blacks are playing to their top potential, there can be a real connection there between those receivers and that quarterback, but the pr- the problem is that ever since ever since they lost to the Tie Cats, uh, they just or even in that game against the Tie Cats, they haven't had that same connection as they did when they were playing. Well, I guess the Bombers is, is probably the most prime example of that because when they were playing the Bombers, they were they were in perfect sync. They were in perfect sync with each other. And, and they were just blowing stuff up. But it seems like that's kind of being rattled a bit now and that they they really – they got to try to find that again because it's one of those things where that was the key to their success. If they don't find that again, like you're losing the Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's not that good. They're really not. They're, Saskatchewan's a 500 I mean, team. Like, If you wanted to be realistic, outside of the top two teams in the West, mm-hmm. like – Saskatchewan barely beat Ottawa. And let me just pull up this. They, they barely beat Ottawa. And they're narrowly above uh, Calgary. Because they're 4-4. Four and four, Calgary's 3-5. and five, But realistically, Calgary can, can overtake them. I mean, the Stampeders are able to beat the Argonauts. So it's one of those things where... I think the stamp, and especially since they stamp, the stamps got Jake Mayer healthy, and riders now are are the, Mason Fine and Dolagala are their go to guys, which is like, like you'll 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 get away with it against the the Red Blacks who are you know last in the East, but are you gonna get away with that when you're gonna be playing some tougher teams? I mean, they're gonna have two games against um, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers uh, in the Labor Day Classic as well as the Banjo Bowl. Are they going to be able to do that? I don't know. It's just one of those things where Riders are going to have a tough schedule ahead of them, and I could see uh, the, Stampeder, uh, the Stampeders uh, getting ahead of them. Yeah, so overall, it's it's one of those things where I just I don't necessarily see, I think, with, with the, the schedule that the Riders have ahead of them, uh, especially with the fact that, again, as I just mentioned, uh, the stamps they just just defeat the Argos. Uh, it's going to be one of those interesting things to see where that where that happens. So, is there is there anything else that you have here, uh, Rick? Not that I know of. Uh, not that you know of. But yeah, final score uh, for that game would be why is it showing me the wrong week? Uh, twenty six to twenty four for the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders over the Ottawa Red Blacks. So. Uh, let me know if you uh, what you guys thought of this video of this week of CFL action. Uh, make sure you guys comment that in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. And we will see you guys next time.
Touchdown! 